Thank you everyone for coming today. I will be presenting on my master's thesis which utilizes detrital zircons to characterize elements of Western Laurentia and using that new characterization in order to infer about the late Paleozoic tectonic evolution. The overview of this talk can be followed in the top bar by tracking the magmatic zircon along the way. And so this talk will begin with a brief introduction and background, which leads to the overarching questions that led to this study. Um, I will talk a little bit briefly about the methods and I will present the results. The results will then be compared with data from um, in literature and these comparisons will then implicate anything about the late Paleozoic tectonic evolution. And I will end with the conclusions. A lot of questions stem from the period in which North American continental margin transformed from a passive margin in the Neoproozoic to a convergent margin in the Mesozoic. So a lot of the stuff I'm working on is within the Paleozoic and Mesozoic. So a brief general geologic time scale, if you forget the older stuff. Um, a lot of that pre-Mesozoic tectonic evolution was destroyed by the um, intrusion of the Sierra Nevada batholith, along with several several phases of faulting and thrusting. However, there are presence of that pre-Mesozoic rock record preserved as mes metamorphic pendants in the Sierra Nevada batholith. So the question becomes, what can these pendants inform us about that tectonic evolution? The problem with this is that these pendants contain no fossils that provide biostratigraphic age, as well as the mineralogy and chemistry is insufficient for a prolith identification. So in order to address these issues, I utilize zircons. Zircons is a mineral that's highly resistant to chemical and mechanical weathering. It contains high uranium concentration and low lead concentration during crystallization, which is important for the uranium lead dating series. In the following figures, there are two morphology of zircons. On the left are euhedral zircons that are typical for magmatic zircons. On the right are rounded, smaller zircon grains typical for cemetery rocks. And I will be focusing more on these little guys. Once the zircon is dated, we um, get an age. And these age are typically characterized against the basement provinces of Northern Ameri North America due to the fact that they all have age ranges associated with them. These different basement provinces are potential sources for the zircons that I will be dating. And so four provinces that we'll mainly talk about is the Archean Craton, which is in pink, which contains zircons that are greater than 2.5 billion years old. <laughs> we have a laugh track for your thesis. I know, I was like, uh. All this stuff out. My wife's calling. Okay, so basement provinces. <laughs> Woo. Uh, <laughs> no, did not. <laughs> okay, so the Archean um, Craton is one of the ones I'll be talking about. It contains zircons that are greater than 2.5 billion years old. To the south is the Yavapai terrain, which contains zircons in 1.7 to 1.8 billion years old. And in the dark yellow, the Miyazo, 1.6 to 1.7 billion years old. Throughout this presentation, I will typically refer to the Yavapai terrain and Miyazo terrain as one entity, the Yavapai Miyazo, due to the fact that they have close zircon ages associated with them. And the last is the Grenville origin, which is 1.0 to 1.3 billion years old. And you'll typically hear those names throughout the presentation. A lot of questions do exist in terms of the tectonics that happen in the Paleozoic. So I'm going to give you a simplified tectonic model to give you a little bit of background. This map shows the terrains of the late Paleozoic to Mesozoic terrains. And most of this, well half of this was submerged in water at that time. tectonic models start with the rifting of Rodinia, which is, was the supercontinent. This rifting transformed the Western Laurentia into a passive margin. 
and this passive margin became the locus of silicic classic and carbonate deposition, which then um, resulted in the passive margin, which is in purple, dominated by quartzite with less siltstone, argite, and phyllite with carbonate intervals. Common detrital zircon population ranges from the Grenville, which is a 1.0 to 1.3 billion years old, and the Yavapai Miyazo, 1.6 to 1.8 billion years old. These are the two common detrital zircon signatures of the passive margin. By mid Paleozoic, art magnetism occurred. And so the King's Kui Ophiolite Bite, which is comprised of tectonic slabs of the King River Ophiolite, experienced its first episode of mid-oceanic ridge basalt magmatism during the early Ordovician. By late Devonian to early Mississippian, deposition in the passive margin stopped and the antler orogeny occurred. The antler orogeny is mainly known for the emplacement of the Roberts Mountain Lochthon, which is in dark blue. The Roberts Mountain Lochthon is comprised of, uh, comprised of Cambrian to Devonian deep marine rocks. The emplacement of the Roberts Mountain Lochthon is very, it's also debated as well. So I'm going to present three different models. The first model by Birchill and Davis proposed that the Roberts Mountain Lochthon strata was being sourced by Laurentia in an offshore basin. And that basin later was thrusted and placed on top of the continental margin. Another proposal by Garrett et al can be reflected by this figure. And so I'm gonna rotate this figure so it's configured in a way that we recognize North America. Now Nevada is into the south, north to Idaho, to Canada. And so Garris et al. proposed that the Roberts Mountain Lockdown received detritus from the Peace River Arch, which is in Canada. And this detritus um, was transported through longshore currents along the western continental margin through turbidity flows. Lindy et al. modified that model and saying that the um, Roberts Mountain Lockdown strata was being um, was receiving detritus further north. So Nevada is currently in the south down here somewhere. And so detritus was being received towards the north and that Roberts Mountain Lockdown strata was being translated down and later thrusted onto the continental margin. By late Pennsylvania, the southern edge of the passive margin, depicted by the pink, is truncated along the sinistral transform system. By the Permian, the polarity of the McLeod arc reversed, which caused the Golconda slide basin in the blue to begin to close. Intertransform spreading within this transform system also begin began, and so the King's Kui Ophiolite Belt received, um, record a second pulse of magmatism. And this magmatism, um, the magma introduced through the early Ordovician rocks, with shearing and hydrothermal reactions, the rocks then um, began to turn into a melange. In the Permal Triassic, the King's Kui Ophiolite Belt dock against the continental margin, and subduction resumed, which caused the emplacement of the Golconda Lachthan, which is comprised of Upper Devonian to Upper Permian Deep Ocean Basin rocks. Similarly to the Roberts Mountain Lachthan, there's a lot of models that have been um, the proposed for the emplacement. So I'm going to present two. Miller et al. depicted that the, Shunivers the strata was being deposited in a basin and that the placement occurred due to a west-facing arc system during a back arc basin closure. The second model by Breckener and Snyder depicted that the Lachthon was a large accretionary prism that was displaced due to an east facing arc system. After the emplacement of the Golconda, the deposition of the Calaveras complex and the King se sequence occurred. And then by the Mesozoic, the Sierra Nevada Bathlith intruded through all those rock record and destroyed most of it. Magnetism was nearly continuous for 195 million years with several magma flare-outs and walls. And so a lot of the pre-Mesozoic rock record are preserved as metamorphic pendants, which is seen with these gray. The gray color signifies that they are unstudied 
They, they are surrounded by the Sierra Nevada Bathlith in pink. To the west is the Calavera sequence in green and the Quia Melange in purple. I will be setting these pendants that are found in Tulare County, California. <laughs> um, Previous undergraduate students collect the samples from the Sicon pendant, which is this little guy right here. <clears throat> Through preliminary analysis, they found that there's a correlation between the Sicon pendant and the Shunarver sequence, which is part of the Golconda Lockthon in North Central Nevada and Independence Mountain. <clears throat> and so whenever we received um, ages from zircons, we plot them in a probability density plots as shown here. This plot is used for visual inspection with the area, the area underneath the curve normalized. And so whenever we look at these graphs, we look at peaks. The higher the peak, that means that there's more percentage of zircons within that age range, with age in the x-axis as million years old. These probability density plots are typically stacked with other samples in order to compare those similar peaks. And so the bottom two samples are the Schoenover sequence um, that has been published by Rally et al. 2000 and compared to a previous analysis of Sicon pendant. Based on this, <clears throat> this visual inspection, there are similar ranges from 1.6 to 1.8, which was the Yapa Pamiatsu, as well as similar um, peaks greater than 2.5 which is uh, from zircons originating from the Archean craton. However, nowadays for statistical analysis, we need an n value of 300. So that means that we need to analyze at least 300 detrial zircons in order to provide a good statistical analysis. And so the question becomes, the does the correlation between the Schoenover sequence and site component still exist with a higher n value? Does the provenance of the nearby pendants um, to Sicon differ? And so included in this study, from north to south, will be Hospital Rock of Sequoia Pendant. Um, throughout this pre presentation, I'll be referring it to Hospital Rock. To the south, South Fork Pendant. Another sample of Sicon Pendant will be collect is collected. And then the last pendant is Slate Mountain Pendant. These are all included into the analysis of my study. And then the overall question, what are the implications to the tectonic evolution of Western Laurentia? And so the methods in all of these questions, um, sampling, went out to collect a sample from South Fork and another sample from Sicon. Previous Cal State Fullerton students collected samples from Hospital Rock and Slate Mountain, and I will incorporate that into my data set. More samples from the Schoenover sequence are collected in order to increase that n value. After collecting um, sampling, I will be conducting a petrographic analysis of these samples to see if there's any differences between them. Um, then I will separate out zircons, which will be then used for uranium lead dating. And these dates will be um, analyzed by statistical analysis and the data results will be compared with published data with further implications. And so in order to do um, zircon separation, the samples that collect in the field are grind and crushed to sand size sediments. These sand size sediments are then sieved, um, sieved and so the sediments I want are smaller than 400 micrometers. The sediments that are less than 400 micrometers are then processed through a hand magnet to separate out the highly magnetic grains such as magnetite. It is then processed through a Whiffley water table in order to separate out sediments by density. So zircon has a very high density of 4.2 grams per milliliter and so the high the densest grains that separate are separated out from this process will be processed through a Franz magnetic separator. Zircon has a low magnetic characteristics, and so the remaining non-magnetic grains will be separated out again by des des um, density. After this step, zircons are hand-picked out 
for uranium lead dating at the Arizona Laser Cron Center using the LAIC PMS. And so this is a mound full of zircons. And so in the middle block are zircons that <clears throat> we hand picked out. It was a nice adventure. <laughs> it is bounded by um, zircons for use for standards. And so zoom and look, these are the zircons of my samples, and each zircon are at most 300 micrometers in diameter. So they're very tiny. At least 300 zircons are zapped with a laser in order to make a pit. This pit will then, um, the ions that are released will then be used, will be processed through a mass spectrometry in order to get uranium lead ages. <coughs> When these ages are obtained, um, they are plot on a concordia diagram to give us some information about the system in which the zircon crystallizes. And so this is a concordia diagram with the y and axes with two different uranium lead decay systems. So on the x is 207 lead over 235 uranium. On the y, 206 lead over 238 uranium. This blue curve is determined empirically based on these two decay systems. And so whenever a sample, a zircon, is plotted on Concordia, which is depicted by the X, <clears throat> it means that it involved in a closed system. When these samples plot off Concordia, it means these are considered discordant. These zircon crystallize in an open system. At this point, um, samples are pro typically processed at 10 to 20% discordance. However, for uh, my samples, I process them at a 30% discordance. So meaning any samples that are greater than 30% discordance are thrown out of analysis. <clears throat> a best fit line is fit through all these discordant ages in order to get the upper intercept, which tells us the crystallization age of this sample. The lower intercept tells information about the last disturbance age of this system. These ages are then compared to the basement map, which will, you will see throughout this presentation. And so um, before going into the uranium lead results, I'm going to go briefly into the petrographic analysis, starting with the pendants. So hospital rock, <clears throat> the outline of these thin sections will be referred to the map in the corner, so they will correlate. So hospital rock formation, which is towards the north, contains primarily of quartz and biotite laths. To the south is South Fork, which shows a higher degree of foliation, so it contains quartz, calcite, white mica, and biotite. Two samples from the Sycon Penda are collected due to the different mineralogy. One <clears throat> is primarily of quartz and biotite, and the other one has, shows weak fo foliation with quartz, biotite, white mica. And the last sample is slate mountain, which is comprised of quartz and biotite. So just on a br um, brief overview, you can see that there's different mineralogy and fabric between these metamorphic pendants, which will be important later on. <clears throat> Since Sycon pendant correlate with Schoonover sequence of the Golconda lockthon, I will be mainly focusing on collecting samples from the Schoonover sequence, which is in red. This is a zoom in of the stratigraphic column of just the Schoonover sequence, and sampling took place mainly on the lower portion. If the sampling follows Riley at all, just because we wanted to increase that n value. And so samples were collected from the pink in the silicic classic rocks, as well as the volcanic classic rocks in red. <clears throat> the silicic classic rock contains class of quartz, chert, and um, plagioclase feldspar. It is well sorted, and the great, um, class are subrounded to rounded. In the volcanic classic one, it contains class of quartz, chert, volcanic rocks, and calcite. It is poorly sorted and it is ranges from subrounded to subangular. The volcanic class in the sample are the ones that are typically more subangular, <clears throat> which is important. And the last sample is collected from this very well mature quartz sandstone. In outcrop form, you can tell that the quartz sandstone is interfingered with the more immature volcanic component of the Schoonover sequence. <coughs> Mm 
Mm -hmm. When plotting the uranium lead dates of all the Shunover sequence, um, there could be similar age peaks are shown. However, there's one difference in the sample. This large peak at a younger age. This peak is at 350 million years old and that can be interpreted as the maximum depositional age of the Shunover sequence. Typically, statistical analysis is conducted and depositional age is obtained through the three youngest zircon clusters. What's really important in this sample is that I was able to use N, uh, 20 zircons and still get an average age of 350 million years old, which is important for um, the source, interpreting the source of the Shunover sequence. When comparing the metamorphic pendants together, they have similar age ranges of 1.4 to 1.5, and then also the 1.6 to 1.8, the Yavapai Miyazu terrain. However, in when using statistical analysis, zircons with a Mesozoic age, age range is discarded just because they could be zircons coming from um, the Sierra Nevada batholith, as well as zircons with high uranium thorium ratio. The high uranium high uranium thorium ratio indicates that the zircon could have undergone metamorphism and so that is um, discarded from analysis. Um, so the, the yellow bar shows similar peaks however the blue bar shows dissimilar peaks and so South Fork and Sycon show um, peaks greater than 2.5 so there's zircons originating from the Archean terrain in the pink and the Slate Mountain and Hospital Rock shows zircons that are originating from the Grenville or, um, origin, which is in light purple. When comparing this through another statistical analysis, the KS test, this table um, compares two data distributions to determine if they're um, statistically different from each other. And so the gray bars shows that that is when the two of the same sample intercept. And when reading this graph, you only really have to read half the scrap table. The data in the blue is the same as the data that's below the gray um, blocks, cells. So just read the top half. Um, these numbers are the p-values. So if the p-values are greater than 0 0.05, it means that there's a 95 confidence level that the two age spectras are similar and are not picked at random. And so based on this table, the KS test shows that Hospital Rock has a correlation with Slate Mountain. And the two Sycon pendants samples correlate as well. However, no other pendants correlate. One problem with the KS test is that there's a lot of sensitivities. It is sensitive to the number of analyses, it's sensitive to the proportion of similar ages, and it's also sensitive to the presence of different ages. So the use of the KS test is sort of dwindling in literature. It's not disappeared, hasn't disappeared yet, but it's, um, it's sort of dwindling. And another statistical analysis is being commonly used, the multidimensional scaling. <clears throat> this statistical analysis provides a visual inspection of patterns of um, proximity. So there's no axes on this graph, just because it's a one-to-one -one ratio, we want to look at the distances between the samples and not the values. So each circle represents a different sample. Samples that are connected by a solid line means that they have a stronger connection than correlation than something that is connected by a dashed line. So based on this map, there's, two, there's a clear boundary independence. There's one on the right, which is Slate Mountain Hospital Rock, which contains main detrital age populations at the Grenville or, um, origin and the Yavapai Miyazu terrain. On the left are South Fork and Sycon pendant, which contains zircon grains from the Archean Kraton and the Yavapai Miyazu terrain. And so the main difference that separates these two groups of pendants is the presence of the Archean zircons and the Grenville zircons. When comparing these pendants to the Shunover sequence, there is a similar age range as the Yavapai Miyazu, as well as zircons from the Archean Kraton. However, there are some differences, mainly zircons from the Grenville origin. When comparing through a KS test, 
<clears throat> um, just know for the Shinover sequence with the high 350 million year old peak, that peak was not included in the analysis because that large end value is going to disturb the statistical analysis a little bit. So when looking at this, just look in the red box, dependents do not correlate anything with the Shinover sequence. It was wonderful. So there's no correlation. <laughs> So the question, does the correlation still exist with a higher end value? No. So the Schoenover sequence is not a prolif of those metamorphic pendants, but it does not exclude the fact that the Schoenover could um, contribute some kind of detritus, some kind of zircons into those pendants. Does the provenances of other unstudied pendants proximal to Psychon correlate? Well, there's um, a little bit of correlation between Psychon and South Fork pendant and there is a correlation between Slate Mountain Pendant and Hospital Rock. So what are the different sources for these pendants? In order to answer this question, the data um, was compared with published uranium lead dates with other places around Western Laurentia. And so first for the metamorphic pendants of this study, which is on the bottom, it is compared to samples from the passive margin. So the passive margin is split into two, one with the younger ma passive margin strata and one with the older passive margin strata. Just because the two strata contains different detrital zircon populations. So based on visual inspection, there is a similar peaks between Slate Mountain Pendant and Hospital Rock to the older passive margin strata. <coughs> with these Grenville age peaks and then the Yavpai Miyazo. Another correlation can be seen between the Psycon pendant and the younger passive margin, where they have um, so some of the same peaks at the Yavpa Miyazo and the Archean Craton. When putting all these through a KS test, there are three correlations that can be made. Slate Mountain correlates with Hospital Rock, which is highlighted in red. Hospital rock formation correlates with the older passive margin strata. And the last introduces a new element, Harmony B formation. South Fork shows a correlation with the Harmony B formation of Roberts Mountain Lochthon. Due to this correlation, compared to Schoenover sequence, all three samples are combined into this one probability density plot, are compared to the Roberts Mountain Lochthon and the Harmony B. Um, Harmony B is still part of the Roberts Mountain Lockthon. I just excluded out just for statistical analysis. And so through visual inspection, you can see that there are similar peaks at the Yavpa Miyazo, as well as the Archean Craton. So this kind of infers that Roberts Mountain Lockthon and Golconda had similar sources. Oh, bars, visual. So 2.5 and the Yavpa Miyazo. Through a KS test, there is a correlation that's shown between the Roberts Mountain Lockthon and the Schoenover sequence. When plotting all of the samples into a multi-dimensional scaling, there, um, each sample is abbreviated. So S for Schoenover sequence, P for pendants, R for Roberts Mountain Lockthon, PM for passive margin strata, and H for Harmony B, uh, Robert Mountain Lockthon. Just with a brief overview, a sort of trend can be detected from this. So on the left side of the map, these samples contain more Grenville age zircons, while the samples on the right contain more Yavpai Miyazo. On the right, there is more, um, zircons on the bottom contains more Archean Craton zircons than the ones on top. And so by looking at this map, there's several correlations that can be made. A story kind of unfolds. On the right, you have Hospital Rock, Slate Mountain, and the older passive margin. And so with these plotted next to each other, it kind of solidifies the fact that the Hospital Rock and Slate Mountain received detritus from the older passive margin. On the right, the Schoenover sequence correlates with the Roberts Mountain Lockthon, as well as some of Harmony B formation. The easy part. Now the harder part of the story is Psycon pendant, the one that didn't really correlate with anything through the KS test, through um, probability density plot. Through this map, it shows that Psycon does correlate with South Fork, 
um, and it also correlates with the younger passive margin strata. And so that kind of indicates that maybe SciComm was receiving some of that younger, pa younger passive margin strata um, during its time. Soft fork correlates with Harmony B. And so what are the different sources for these pendants? Hospital rock, which is colored in light blue, correlates with the older passive margin. Sycon and South Fork have similar sources, um, potentially Roberts Mountain Lockthon, the Golconda Lockthon, and maybe even the passive margin. The Sheen River sequence have a similar source to Roberts Mountain Lockthon. The robust 350 million year old million year old age peak coupled with the angular volcanic class that are found in the sample documents that there's a nearby volcanic source to the Shunover Depositional Basin. Um, Lindy et al. correlated that the Roberts Mountain locked on to a northern source, the Peace River Arch, which is in green. Due to the fact that of these um, magmatic arcs and terrains located in that area. And so the Golconda Lockthon, um, more specifically the Shoe River sequence, also have these similar age ranges. And so it kind of solidifies that Golconda and Roberts Mountain Lockthon could potentially have gotten their sort detritus from the Peace River Arch. And so what are the implications to the tectonic evolution of Western Laurentia based on these results? So here's a map um, of late Devonian to early Mississippian and it shows an approximate coastline during this time. So during the late Devonian to early Mississippian, deposition of the Golconda Lockthon, denoted in yellow, was receiving sediments from the Peace River Arch in green into a basin. With a nearby volcanic source that was um, giving out detritus that sort of promoted that 350 million year old Zircon peak. The basin was receiving tritus from this arc and then the distal terrains. In the middle Mississippi to early Permian, the Golconda Lockdown was translated southward. And it was later then in place on top of the Roberts Mountain Lockdown. After the emplacement of the Golconda Lockdown, um, detritus was transporting, so which the Yakuts Basin, which we knew, named it, it's a newly named basin, was receiving detritus from the Roberts Mountain Lockthon, the Golconda Lockthon, and the Younger Passive Margin, which then later became um, the place location of the South Fork Pendant and the Sycon Pendant. So conclusions that can be made from the study that the uranium-led analysis depict two different sources for the four pendants which is still color coded. There is a distinct boundary that can be drawn between these different groups of pendants. And so it could represent the truncated margin of Laurentia, but we're gonna investigate this further at a later time. There was a, um, the robust 350 million, old, million year old age peak of the Shinover sequence eliminates deposition immediately offshore of the Roberts Mountain Lockdown. Um, as proposed by earlier models, and suggested that the deposition of Golconda occurred further north. And so, for a brief tectonic reconstruction, the strata of Golconda was deposited near the Peace River Arch and then translated southward. It was then in place over the Roberts Mountain Lockthon. So, and then sediments from the Roberts Mountain Lockthon, the Golconda Lockthon, and the Passive Margin um, deposit in the Yakuts basins, which later form the Yakuts series pendants. References. I would like to thank my advisor, Diane, Dr. Diane Clements Knotts, uh, for her mentorship throughout the two and a half years oh. and for not letting me drown in the river. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I would like to thank my committee members, um, Dr. Valley Mamiti and Adam Woods for their contributions. <laughs> uh, my friends, fellow grad students, colleagues and peers, as well as my family.